What's the story, Morning Glory? What's the word, Hummingbird? Thank you so much for clicking on my channel and for joining me for this review of Married at First Sight, Season 15, Episode 2. So let's start off with Stashi and Nate, the hustler with a heart. So today is their wedding day. Um, Dr. Pepper tells us that Nate's fun side will be a balance to Stashi's more serious side. Nate used to be a, book, a bootlegger, we find out. He used to sell um, a fake designer designer stuff. Um, so, and, and I know that that's not a good thing, but Stashi did say that she kind of likes, you know, she's generally attracted to men who are a little bit, you know, rough around the edges, uh, like your average thug or whatever. So she might not have a problem if she finds out that he used to, you know, be on the other side of the law. Um, I did not like her dress. I did not like her dress at all. Um, I thought that with as striking as she is and with her having the kind of figure that she does, which is, you know, she was tall, she's slender. I really wanted her to wear something that would accentuate her shape and that would show more of her curves. So that long flowy dress, I really didn't like it on her. And I don't think it really even fit her personality because she's uh, like, a she's a neat freak. And she seems to be very like, a perfectionist and I just wanted something that was a little bit more I don't want to say severe but something that was just uh, like just form-fitting clean cut straight lines and not this flowy loosey-goosey type of thing so I didn't like her dress his tuxedo was okay now um, while they're getting ready in their respective areas they exchange gifts and they each gave the other an instant camera and I thought that that was you know that was cute so hopefully that's a, a good sign of things to come so out of all the couples, I think that these two probably look the best together. So when she came down the aisle, he was really happy to see her. He was very pleased. She was also very pleased. Um, he tells her that she's beautiful. She told him that she thought he was handsome. And Nate said that she is his ideal woman because she's tall. She's thin. She has a lot of hair and she has nice teeth. So Nate is very, very pleased. I get the feeling that even though Nate... It's sort of like this. He's got this kind of relaxed, beachy, uh, California kind of vibe about him. I think he likes what he likes. And that's it on period. I think that he, if she was anything less than his ideal, um, I don't think he would have been happy. Even though he seems to be open minded and going with the flow. I think he likes what he likes. And that's it. So I'm glad that he was pleased with uh, Stashi. So after they do the ceremony and they exchange their vows, they go off to have their very first conversation together as a married couple. And I think they talk about their jobs. She tells him what she does. He tells her what he does. And they both work from home. So hopefully that's also going to be a good thing because it'll maybe give them more time to spend together to get to know one another. And um, she says that she's a neat freak. Um, her friends joke about how she's such a neat freak that her home doesn't even look lived in it looks completely like staged like a model home um every single season of married at first sight when they're having their very first conversation after getting married there's always um a couple of people where they'll talk about how oh i'm a neat freak and everything has to be super duper clean and, da, da, and it's never been a problem so I, I don't even know why they mention it so when it it comes time to take their pictures and I thought their pictures were adorable. I really like this couple together. I think that they're vibing. I think that there is definitely, definitely chemistry and I really like Stashi and Nate together. Um, I didn't like Stashi like on her own, but with Nate, I like her. I actually do like her. I'm like slowly warming up to her. And um, he made a comment about her small waist. So Nate is very, very happy. Obviously, like I said before, there's a lot of chemistry there. So we know it's going to be, I'm pretty sure it's going to go down in the honeymoon suite. I will be very surprised if it doesn't. And, um, and, and Nate also has this, I, I don't know how to explain it. He kind of has this like a dominant nature about him. Like he's got a, he has a very strong energy, I realized. Um, and he definitely has a very strong sexual energy as well. So Stassi is probably in for the ride of her life. Moving on. Alexis and Justin, they already got married. We already saw their wedding last week. So now we see them taking their wedding photos. 
Their wedding photos were okay, whatever, but there was one particular photo, and I wish I could edit that in, but there was one particular photo that they took, which took my breath away with Justin and Alexis. It took, it was so beautiful. Um, I don't even know how, he was standing behind her, their faces were together, he was sort of, his eyes were kind of looking down, she was, her head was kind of tilted to the side, I think she was, I don't know if she was looking up, I don't know where she was looking, but it was such a pretty, pretty, pretty picture, I loved it, and so they have their first dance, and Justin is just so smitten with Alexis, and Alexis is smitten with Justin, and I wonder if it's got anything to do with him being so tall, and the stereotype stereotype that you know the stereotype of tall men and you know what they have I wonder if that's why she's really excited about Justin because when he told her that he has been celibate uh she was like oh no oh no 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 like she's kind of hoping that he would break his celibacy with her obviously he will y'all are married um unless he's going to be celibate until you know he finds out what's going to happen on decision day I hope that's not what's going to happen. I hope that, you know, he's going to just do whatever comes natural for him and her and that he's not going to hold out on her until after decision day if they do decide to stay together. So she wants to, you know, sample the goodies. She she wants to get into it. You know, she wants to throw down. So I hope that he is going to break his celibacy for her. So. Yeah, that's Justin and Alexis. Moving on to Lindy and Miguel. So Miguel is a character and Miguel is sort of a lot in the sense of he's different. He's very, very different. And and I was kind of like worried about how Lindy would feel about Miguel. I don't. Well, okay. well, I was going to say, I don't think Miguel is someone that you can like instantly um, be drawn to. He's very good looking. You know, he's very easy on the eyes. Um, he's, he's definitely attractive, but he's got these quirks about him that I think might turn off a lot of women, but it didn't turn off Lindy. Lindy was very, very happy. So, um, they're both, they both have doctorates and, uh, Lindy is the overthinker. When she went dress shopping, I swore she, she probably tried on like about 15 dresses and her friends were like, okay, she's starting to overthink this whole process. She wasn't finding the right dress. And one of her friends had said something like, you know, she's overthinking this and she, um, she's overthinking the way that she is supposed to feel when she finds the right dress. So she, I don't know if she's got really nitpicky. I don't know if she was waiting for some type of feeling to just like overcome her when she did put on the right dress. But thankfully, I think that when she was on her 15th dress, and of course I'm exaggerating, but when she was on her upteenth dress, all of her friends were like, yes, girl, yes, that's beautiful. That's wonderful. Yes, yes. Because I think that they were tired and they wanted to go home. And they're like, you know what? The next dress that she tries on, let's just pump her up so we can get the hell out of here. So Lindy was very sheltered as a child. Uh, her graduating class, I think she said there was only two people in her graduating class. Um, I don't know if she was homeschooled. I don't, I, I'm assuming that there was like a very strong religious upbringing. Um, she talks about how it, it was just a very strict, strict upbringing. Didn't socialize a lot. Didn't have a lot of friends. Very, very sheltered by her family. But she has an outgoing kind of personality. She's not reserved. She's not closed in. She's very talkative. She's very open. She's got a great personality. She's very happy. So on uh, when they do their ceremony, um, Lindsay, oh, so on the wedding day, Lindy talked about how she hadn't been a girlfriend in a very long time. And all of a sudden now she's going to be a wife. Um, Miguel has issues of being too clingy. Um, how do I feel about that? I don't think it was, I don't think it's going to bother Lindy. I don't think it's going to bother Lindy at all. If Miguel comes off as too clingy because Lindy just has like this very sweet natured personality. She's not a very strong, well, not 
I don't see her as like this very strong, independent alpha woman, you know, leave me alone. Um, I, I want to do everything by myself. Um, I don't need a man. I just want a man kind of woman. She doesn't seem like that type. So I don't think she's going to have an issue with him being too clingy. Now, Lindy's dad is not supportive of her being on this show. So he wasn't there and it was going to be her brother that was going to walk her down the aisle. And I also believe that her parents are divorced. So when she comes down the aisle, uh, they like each other. Thank God, you know, they're pleased with one another. And she immediately gives them a very long hug. And I don't think I've ever seen that on Married at First Sight. So she gave him a, lo- a really long hug. And I'm pretty sure that that made him feel more comfortable. That made him feel like, oh, maybe she kind of likes me. And it definitely broke the ice between them because I'm pretty sure that that moment at the altar when you're meeting your soon to be spouse for the very first time can be very, very nerve wracking. So the fact that she hugged him, I think put him at ease, put her at ease and made things a little bit more comfortable between them. So it was a good wedding. The whole entire time that I was watching their wedding and all the weddings, really, I had this huge smile on my face. I realized I was smiling because I was really enjoying the wedding ceremonies. And the officiant at the end, um, he really got it hype. He really made it crunk because he just was like shouting and ladies and gentlemen, I introduced to you, Lindy and Miguel Santiago. And he was just like, it's not, he almost sounded like a DJ instead of a wedding officiant. And everybody just stood up and started clapping and cheering when they were walking back down the aisle. It was just a really beautiful ceremony. So when they have their moment together to have their one-on-one conversation, um, Lindy referred to her husband as, you know, she was talking to the producers. She referred to him as hot. She thinks he's hot. So I was really happy that she was pleased with him and he was pleased with her. So um, he brings up, because he's a Dungeon and Dragons uh, freak. He really loves Dungeons and Dragons. I'm surprised that people still play that because I remember that used to be a thing when I was a kid and I can't believe that it's still going on. So he takes out this it looked like a dice to me, but she called it a cube. So he takes out this cube and he starts talking about Dungeons and Dragon and, and Harry Potter. And I was like, oh no, 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 please don't bring up Dungeons and Dragon on your wedding day. But Lindy thought that it was cute and adorable. She did not mind at all. Even though she wasn't familiar with Dungeons and Dragons, she did not mind at all. And I was like, oh, thank God. That's just one of his quirks. So maybe he was nervous and maybe it makes him more comfortable to talk about something that he's very familiar with. But it was, it was a little bit adorable. It was a little bit adorable. I don't know how she's going to feel when he pulls out his um, cosplay costumes and outfits and, and, and whatever that was when he was dressed like a bear or a fox or something. So I don't know how she's going to take that. So he's a medical writer for a pharmaceutical company, um, like an underwriter. Now I know what he was talking about. I thought he meant like he wrote medical books, but he's like a medical underwriter for pharmaceutical companies. He called himself a, a drug dealer and she's a physical therapist and they were very pleased with one another. They were really, really pleased. She liked the ring that he chose for her because she says that that's the kind of ring that she really wanted for herself, that she's always wanted. Very simple, very classic type of ring. Um, like I said, they both have doctorates and And so hopefully, hopefully, you know, they will um, get along and things will go well. But I enjoyed their wedding and I did like them as a couple. And I am hoping for, you know, really good things to come for them. So now that we went through all of this joy and happiness with these three weddings, um, enjoying all of these couples, Now comes the doom and gloom of Morgan and Ben. So Morgan goes wedding dress shopping and I think she's very cute. She's very adorable. I wish that she would have chosen something a little bit more. And she wanted a wedding dress that was different. You know, she wanted a unique style of dress, not your typical type of wedding gown. And so I really wanted that. I wish they would have chosen something really spunky and young and fun for her. But it was just like a regular, normal wedding gown, I think, if I can remember correctly. It was just like a normal gown. It wasn't anything that really fit her personality. Um, I think she should have chosen something that was short just something fun and unique, but I guess that type of store doesn't have stuff like that. Um, so he went tuxedo shopping with his boys and he chose a white tux. I am not a big fan of white tuxedos because it looks very maitre d' waiter, 
I work in a restaurant, I work in hospitality. It, that, that's the kind of vibe it gives me. Unless everything is white. Like it's a white tux with a white bow tie or a white cummerbund or everything has to be white, white pants, white jacket, everything white. Maybe then I can kind of deal with it. But if it's black, if it's like all white with like a black bow tie or something, it just looks, it comes off very, you know, may I take your order kind of thing in a really high end restaurant. So... Uh, Ben's deal breaker is laziness. He doesn't want to have a lazy wife. He wants his wife to have a lot of energy. I guess he wants her to be very active and he wants her to also be very ambitious. And I think Morgan checks all of those boxes. Um, what I did like about her dress though, is that it was sparkly. It was very, very sparkly. I did like the sparkle in the dress and in the veil. Now, Dr. Pepper contacts Morgan and tells her that Ben got COVID and so her wedding is going to be pushed back and she will still be able to go on the honeymoon, but their honeymoon will be very shortened. So I was like, okay, he got COVID. That's what's been going around for the past two years. That's, you know, it's normal now. That's our new normal. Um, because I remember last year, was it? No, it was a uh, wedding at First Sight Houston when um, one of the grooms was exposed to COVID and he practically missed his whole honeymoon because he had to be quarantined. So that's what we got to deal with nowadays. Okay, fine. We get it. But then Morgan says that she wonders if he just got cold feet and he lied about getting COVID. And I was surprised that her mind automatically went so negative, especially when she doesn't know anything about him. Like why she automatically assumed or why she automatically uh, thought that maybe he, he just, maybe he lied about getting COVID because he doesn't want to get married. Like why would your mind automatically go there? Because I wouldn't have thought that. I would have been like, oh, okay, he got COVID. So we just have to wait it out now. I wouldn't automatically go to, oh, he's lying. He's lying about, he's lying about getting COVID because he doesn't want to get married. I wonder why her mind went there. Is she just a negative Nancy like that or what's going on? Moving on to Kristen and Mitch. So this is where it got really, really interesting. And, um, I don't care for Mitch. I didn't like Mitch in episode one. I like him even less in episode two. He's a lot to handle. And my heart goes out to Kristen and I really hope that she can, uh, she's going to be able to, to take it and be able to survive. Um, I don't think Mitch is a good match for anybody. I think Mitch should be a lifelong bachelor. Mitch, it was just really bad. So they go wedding dress shopping and tuxedo shopping. Uh, Mitch arrives at the store on a bike, which <laughs> that's weird. I'm sorry. It's, it's strange. He arrives on a bike. So you arrive there. Hopefully you're not sweaty um, or damp. Like you're going to be trying on clothes. What is happening? So he arrives around his bike and um, yeah, I thought that was strange. Kristen tells us that she was previously engaged. I hope this is not going to be a running theme for her of her constantly bringing this up because she told us in episode one, we hear about it again in episode two, that she was previously engaged. She spent her whole entire savings on this destination wedding. And two weeks before the wedding, her fiance's mistress contacts her and tells her that, you know, she's been having an affair with her fiance. So we understand the story. We get it. I'm pretty sure she's going to bring it up to Mitch. And I hope that it's going to be the last time that we hear about this. So Kristen is a daddy's girl and um, she's really worried about what her father's going to think about this process because he doesn't know yet. And she hasn't really told him the full story of what she's doing on this show. And she really wants him to approve. Then we also find out that Mitch is commitment phobic. So the one thing that Kristen did not want is the one thing that they gave her. Kristen had mentioned that she did not want a man who was in his 40s, who had never been married, never been engaged, never had a serious relationship because it might show that he's afraid of commitment. And that is Mitch. Everything about Mitch tells me that this guy probably has no business getting married. Um, he's very stuck in his ways. He doesn't seem like he's willing to change. He, I just don't understand. And I, okay, yes, they want the drama. They want the ratings. So this is going to be our you know, resident diva. But 
it just spoils the whole experience. You know, I'm happy watching the other three couples. I'm smiling. I'm engaged. I'm involved. I'm enjoying them. And then you get someone like Mitch, who's just here to make a name for himself. He's just here to, you know, disrupt the process, to make a fool out of himself, to become an attention whore. It's going to be the Mitch show. I just don't want to go there. I just don't want it to be like that. But anyway, so here we are. So it's the wedding day. Um, her dad knows that she's on a, some type of a matchmaking show, but he doesn't know exactly what it is. So um, she has to let her dad know. So her dad shows up and she sits down with her dad and she's very, very nervous. I guess she's like, his approval is, means everything to her because she's so nervous. So she tells her dad that um, what's actually going to be happening is I'm going to be getting married to a stranger and I really want you to walk me down the aisle. And her father was like, you're nuts. You're crazy. You're insane. What are you talking about? So, and her dad tells her, I really don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. He tells her, I don't know. So, and I guess that's the reason why she didn't want to tell him until he showed up. Because if she would have told him beforehand, he probably wouldn't even show up. So the dad is like, not really feeling this. Now, Mitch, the lady comes the to, you know, cut his hair and, you know, deal with his beard. Oh, and that's another thing. Mitch has a big old gash on his head, on his bald head, because he went surfing and he hit his head with his surfboard. So he's got this huge, ugly gash on his head that's not even, it's like the Band-Aid on it is like so wackadoodle. And this is how he's going to get married. So the lady is trying to uh, trim his beard. And Mitch throws a fit because he says his beard is too short and his groomsmen are trying to make him feel better. Like, you know what? It actually looks better, shorter. You know, you look a lot more neater, a lot more cleaner. So you really look good. He was like, don't try to make me feel good about this. It doesn't matter what y'all think. It only matters how I feel about it. And I don't feel good about it. Like, where did, you know, Diva Mitch, like, where did he come from? And you're so worried about your beard, which looks really, really nice, but you're not worried about that crazy gash in your head. You're more concerned about how nicely trimmed your, your beard, your, your nicely trimmed beard. You're more concerned about that than the ugly, disgusting gash in your head. So then, um, they try to put on his bow tie and they can't figure out how to tie his bow tie. Then he gets upset about that. You know, he starts complaining. I'm hot. Y'all don't know what the hell y'all are doing. Please get me someone that knows how to tie a bow tie. Like complete diva, complete diva. And I'm just so worried about Kristen. I'm so worried about her. So this is, they haven't even met yet. They haven't even gotten married yet. And it's already off to a really bad start. The producers looked at this guy, spoke to him, interviewed him, went through the whole process of getting to know him. And they're like, you know what? Excuse me. You're perfect for this show. So Kristen's, you know, she's got issues with her dad. She's going to have issues with Mitch. Poor Kristen. She had issues with her ex fiance. The men in Kristen's life, man, they're really giving her the blues. But that is my review of Married at First Sight. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate you joining me for this very quick review. Um, on your way out, please don't forget to rate the video. If you like this content, please subscribe. And I'll definitely talk to you later. Bye.